What is up my fitness junkies? This is a recorded group coaching call from my own personal one-on-one -on -one clients. We do group calls every week and the topic of this one was supplements and nutrient timing. So like supplements and then like fasting and meal frequency, everything like that. So if you're interested in learning more about supplements, nutrient timing, this is gonna have a lot of good value in, in here for you. So stick around until the end because there's a lot of good questions that are asked from my clients towards the end. So. Stick around for that and I'll see y'all in the next clip. We've got supplements and nutrient timing on this one. These are both topics we've kind of done separately in the past, um, but figured it was a good refresher. It's been a, it's been a good while since we've talked about these two. So um, let's go ahead and dive right into it. I'll, I'll kind of be splitting them up. First, we'll talk about nutrient timing and then we'll go into to supplements. But let's do it with no wasted time here. So yeah, so pretty much every single time. I mean, some of you have probably seen this pyramid a, a bunch of times now, but every time I talk about anything like um, with these different categories, I'm going to bring up this pyramid because I, I always want you guys to like know the order of importance on what you should be like putting your most attention towards. Okay. So um, I even, I think I put this on my story today, basically saying this, like, don't put the cart before the horse, you know, even though we're talking about nutrient timing and supplements today, like, the most important factors are your calories, your macros, even your micros, which is part of what we'll talk about with supplements. But um, like if you're not ha if you don't have these three things like a hundred percent dialed in, like don't even worry about this. Like I, I hear so many people, like a lot of times, even on my first calls, that's like one of the things that seems like they're most worried about. Like, what supplements should I should I take? It's like let's let's take a step back like <laughs> where your calories at like do we know what macros we should be hitting like those are much more important factors um and i feel like this time of the year too like there's a lot of marketing with supplements and stuff like that um a lot of people like you know their new year new me it's like the first thing they think about like all right i'm going to the supplement store you know get all my supplements but it's like let's 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 make sure the the most important things um are under control and we're 100 dialed in here and then once you've really tackled all that then these things are what we want to pay attention to after that's taken care of, right? So I'm always going to bring up that pyramid of like the order of importance, just as a friendly reminder. Um, let's go ahead and move on from that. So yeah, so starting off with nutrient timing. Um, so I like this little chart here. Like basically it's showing the different ways you can split up like eating eight, like just an example, 1800 calories a day. I mean, you could have two meals, 900 and 900 you have four meals, like 450 calories each, six meals, 300 calories each. It's, but really like, you know, for your overall weight loss, for your weight goals, you know, all of these examples are going to yield the same results, right? So it really, you know, the, the, the frequency of your meals is not really going to matter that much as far as your weight gain or weight loss goes. Th these are going to yield the same results, all these different examples, um, but I'll talk about it here in a little bit. It's, it's really like what you enjoy and what you can stick to, right. And kind of just both the ease of, of how you can stick to it, but also like what helps you feel full, right. So there's some factors like that, that we'll talk about. Um, I actually really enjoy doing basically the 16, eight intermittent fasting schedule. Um, I've talked about this with a lot of you guys. I, I just really enjoy it. I, I enjoy not eating until about 10 or 11 each day. And then I stop eating around six or seven each day. So that's, that's just the schedule that works really well for me. And I typically have four meals a day. It's like, I wasn't always like that. Um, you know, and it, again, it's not a huge factor. Um, and we'll talk about the factors that do matter within that. Um, but for me, like I work at home, I can like make, I can eat meals whenever I want. And it, I feel like it just helps me stay fueled up. Um, and feeling good throughout the day when I have four meals. That's just what I've have really been enjoying for a while now. But yeah, I really like, you know, with it. So it's basically like every two or three hours I'm eating, right? So, um, and it's within the 16, eight. So fasting for 16 hours, um, eating within, within an eight hour eating window. Um, that's what I really like. I've talked about a lot of the, the benefits of intermittent fasting in the past. Um, so some of them just to go into a little bit, you know, if you, if you want like really, specific examples and, you know, a deeper dive into this, I can tag you in, in like a one or two of the old fasting videos I've done, but, um, for one, it helps with insulin res resistance. Um, so, or sorry, insulin sensitivity. Uh, so, so this is 
like something that can help you with your insulin sensitivity when you fast for a certain amount of time, like intermittent fasting has been shown to help with that. Um, again, you know, with your adherence to the plan, um, and feeling full, some people it's not, it, it's, that has the opposite effect, right? Some people are like, I I'm like super hungry in the morning when I do this for me naturally. And for a lot of people, you know, I've, I've heard the same thing. It's like, they're just not hungry in the morning. So it helps them, you know, basically just not eat while they're already not hungry. Um, and then they're able to eat all their meals when they typically are hungry. So it helps them feel full, um, within that eating window. So that it's really helped me. Um, I've, I've seen it help a lot of my clients as well. So it's worth trying it, you know, again, like there's, there's these benefits. Um, another benefit would be like, um, I think it's called autophagy. I forget the exact word for it, but basically like you're, you're using like dead cells. Um, you're basically feeding on dead cells within the fasting period. Um, so there's certain, you know, there's a lot of these little benefits, um, that they talk about. Um, and yeah, I would say in my opinion, like the bulk of the research, like it's kind of minuscule, like a lot of these benefits, it's not going to be like a huge drastic change on these things. Right. But I, I would say like the biggest benefit that I found with fasting is, is the ability to stick to the plan for, and like staying full within the eating window. Um, so I, I like to use it as just a tool to, to be able to stick to your, to your calories easier. So um, won't be the dead horse on that. Again, if you guys want more info on intermittent fasting, you know, a deeper dive into that, let me know. I can give you some more information on that. Let's keep going here. So, yeah. So again, so like the most important factors when it comes to, to nutrient timing, like what's going to help you stick to it. Right. And that's what I want to figure out. I'm going to use Bryce in here, one of our fitness junkies as an example. Um, so he is someone like, like me who just is never hungry in the morning. Right. And he was finding himself being really hungry at night. He was like, man, like I, I'm eating breakfast, you know, trying to eat breakfast. Um, but then at night I'm just like starving. I just feel like I'm, I have all these cravings at night. So I was like, let's do intermittent fasting. Like if you're already not hungry in the morning, let's push off your meals. Let's start eating at like 11 so that it pushes it later in the day. And so you'll feel full, more full at night and that will cause you not to have those cravings late at night. So it can really be a tool sometimes to help you out with stuff like that with your eating schedule. Um, but nutrient timing as well. So with like the frequency of meals that I would say the most important factor is like surrounding those meals around the gym, right? Because the nutrient timing is really going to affect your gym performance. We want to make sure that you're getting a good amount of nutrients around your workouts. Okay. So that's I actually, I've talked about it before, but I, one of my research papers in college, um, basically it was the whole, the whole semester was just one research paper. We just had to write one research paper for the whole semester. So like a lot of time went into it and I decided to do it on intermittent fasting when I did it. Um, and a lot of the research showed like basically the main con. Um, so there's lots of pros like I was talking about, but the main con <clears throat> was, was uh, a hit to your performance, right? When you're fasted. So, so take that into consideration. Like if you're someone that works out early in the morning, might not be the best thing for you because your gym performance might take a hit, right? So something to take into consideration there. So yeah, but those are really the most important factors I would say when it comes to nutrient timing is what's going to help you stick to it, um, to the plan, like what's going to help you adhere to your meal plan um, and what's going to allow you to have good uh, fuel for your workouts and good recovery afterwards, okay? Um, so let me know if you guys have want me to expand on that or have any specific questions on that. Let's keep going. So yeah, so not gonna spend too much time on the on the nutrient timing part. I would say more of this one will be about the supplements. Um, I think this that's mostly what um, most of y'all wanted to know about um, from the feedback I got on the call when we were talking about this. Um, so we'll dive in a little bit deeper on the supplement side of things on this one. Um, mostly talking about multivitamins, protein, creatine, and caffeine. Um, and I've told this story before, but this was the first pre-workout that I took when I was like 15, 16 years old. And this is now banned, this jacked 3D. Um, <laughs> I was basically, um, long story short, I was basically taking meth when I was like 15, 16 years old. Like this stuff was insane. It had something, an ingredient in it called 1,3-dimethylamylamine, 1,3-DMAA. Yeah, I mean, it it definitely had you, <laughs> had you feeling good, but I... It's it's scary to think that I was taking that at such a young age. It's, it's incredible that that was even like something that was on the market. But 
anyway, let's let's keep going here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so multivitamin is the first one that we're going to talk about, and Emily had a couple questions on this, so I'll try to um, um, let me know if I don't answer it on this. But yeah, I literally like the brand because a lot of people ask about what brand should I get for for my multivitamin. Obviously, if you're a, a male, you know, get the men's multivitamin. If you're a female, get the women's multivitamin because there's little nuances in that um, for 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 men and, and women. So go for that. But other than that, like the brand of it really does not matter. Like literally, whether it's like the most fancy brand or it's like the Walmart brand or Quate, whatever it is, like they're they're the same ingredients. Like you can't have a different ingredient <laughs> like one vitamin A is not going to be better than another vitamin A, right? So it's it's literally all the same ingredients. Um, so really doesn't matter what the brand is. Um, and then I was talking with one of our brand new fitness junkies today on our onboarding call. Um, and he was asking, like, I already take, you know, um, I think he was saying vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin K. Like he was taking these specific vitamins like one at a time. Um, and he was like, should I keep taking that even though I'm going to be taking the multivitamin? So basically I was like, I used to do that too, before I realized like most of the, like the multivitamin is going to cover most of your bases, right? The, the only other one I would say, um, maybe you, well, there, there's a couple more and we'll go into that in a little bit, but like vitamin D, you know, taking extra vitamin D is not going to hurt you. There's, there's research that shows like extra vitamin D is only going to really benefit you. So you can kind of like do more than what's in the multivitamin with that. Um, also magnesium and zinc are a couple ones that I'll talk about here in a bit. Um, doesn't hurt to get a little extra of that, but other than that, guys, like the multivitamin is going to really, it's, it's basically an insurance policy of like, I'm getting my vitamins and minerals, right? So, um, it really just helps to like, say you're not someone that loves vegetables, <laughs> right? So it's, it's kind of just making sure that we get the bare minimum and we're, we're getting these vitamins in that we need. Okay. So try and remember Emily, let me know if those answered those questions, but yeah, you, you take it one every day. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I answered all the questions that you were asking in the beginning, but let me know if not. Um, but yeah, pretty simple with that. So let's talk about protein. Okay. So with, with whey protein, um, I used to always just take regular whey, uh, just like, you know, regular gold standard, hundred percent whey. Uh, but then I realized that whey isolate is a much more, a much purer source of protein. It's really only, you know, it's a little bit more expensive, a couple bucks more, but I would say it's worth it. Um, there's just less filler in it. There's also less, uh, lactose. Um, so obviously whey is like a milk product. Um, so if you're lactose intolerant, I whey isolate is going to have less lactose in it. Um, but obviously if you're like, really lactose intolerant that still might bother you um so for something like that like if you're completely lactose intolerant like you just cannot have milk stuff then like a pea and rice protein is going to be what you'll want to go with um again and we have vegan clients and vegetarian clients in here um so whenever you're shifting towards something like that look at pea and rice protein because the a lot of the vegan proteins out there um don't have all of the essential amino acids that you need um, to, to make a complete protein. Okay. So basically um, amino acids make up protein. They're basically the building blocks of protein. Um, but like, say if it was just a pea protein, it's not going to have all your essential amino acids. Um, so it's not a, actually a complete protein, but a pea and rice protein makes a complete protein. So um, a lot of those vegan proteins out there, um, make sure that it's like something that has complete proteins, got the full amino acid profile. Um, so if you go with like a pea and rice protein, that's going to be a really good option um, if you're vegan or if you're like completely lactose intolerant. Okay. But if you're like, maybe just like, eh, like milk kind of bothers me a little bit, then I would say steer towards like a whey isolate. And we all love the the fruity pebbles. There's been lots of feedback on that. Okay, cool, Emily. Sweet. Um, yeah, and then I really love the Quest bars. You know, we've we've talked about it as well. Uh, but what I'll talk about with this is like if I go on trips or if I have to go on a plane, these are these are what kind of my go tos. Um, it's just easier to travel with than like <laughs> than than a big tub of protein, right? So, um, so that's what I, kind of my go tos when I'm like traveling. Um, so I really like those. But let me know if you guys have other questions on that. Yeah, but. I think the the main kind of like 
change I've made with the protein is just going towards the isolate just for the less filler, less lactose. So let's keep going. Cool. So creatine. So we're going to dive deep into creatine. We got something in the chat here. I was always told that whey protein is for bulking and not for weight loss. Is that just a myth or is there some truth to it? Um, for sure, just a myth. Emily, I'll go ahead and bust that one. So whey protein, it's like just the most clean source of protein basically that you can that you can get. Like, So if you look at um, like the actual macros and the, the ingredients of, of the whey protein, like you know, it's like 120 calories, right? And it's just straight, basically it's just straight protein. Like maybe there's like a couple of grams of carbs, a couple of grams of fat in there, but it's basically just straight protein. Um, so, you know, with, with supplements, that's just what they are. They're, they're, they're supplements. We're supplementing, you know, what we're not maybe getting in our regular diet. So it just makes it easier to get that protein in. Um, so sure. If you were having like a really, you know, there's, there's also like dirtier, <laughs> like dirty proteins out there, right? Like there's muscle milk with like a bunch of sugar and, you know, there's certain, pro there's even mass gainers. So maybe that's where that myth might come from. Like you can take mass gainers, which is like protein, but there's also, it's like really high in calories. It's just like trying to put on mass. But if you're going with like a clean whey protein or whey protein isolate, it's like 120 calories. Um, it's just like straight protein, basically like 25 grams of protein. And it's like two grams of fat, maybe two or so grams of carbs or something like that. Um, so yeah, not just for bulking, it's just allowing you to get that protein in easier. So I would say like to try to go a little bit deeper in that, there's not really like bulking foods and cutting foods. I would say there's like, you know, macro friendly foods and not so macro friendly foods. Um, but whey protein, you know, if, if you're getting the right one, super macro friendly, right? So definitely not, I wouldn't, I would not classify it as like, you know, an, un, a non macro Finley or like bulking food for sure. So, um, so hope that answers that, um, to dive into creatine. So Mark was asking about this. So basically what creatine does, it helps you um, produce more ATP, which is one of your main energy systems, right? So there's, there's like the, uh, there's like the, I'm not even going to go into all of them, but, but basically like you use carbs as fuel, use fat as fuel. You, you actually don't use protein as fuel, really. You, you basically just use protein to recover. Um, but you actually, you know, creatine is one of your main sources of fuel um, for your body. So it helps you produce more ATP. And this is going to give you more energy for your workouts. Um, it's going to help you, you know, perform better in the gym. It's going to help you build more strength, build more muscle. Um, and those are really the, the main benefits there. So muscle and strength, um, I, I will talk about kind of the, the water misconception with creatine. So a lot of people are like, it's going to make me bloat. It's going to make me put on all this water weight. Um, so creatine does add a little bit of water to your, to your overall cells, but it's not like going to make you bloat, right? Like it's, it's going to add water to like your muscles, like all your cells in your body. Right. So it's, it's just hydrating your cells, which is not a bad thing actually. Um, like we're mostly water, right? So, um, but it, it's not going to make you bloat. It's, it's not gonna make you put on like bad weight. Um, it's really just going to help you, you know, be hydrated and it's going to help you, um, have more energy, like I said. So, um, and we got something in the chat here. Let me see what this is. Does it matter what time of the day? Yeah. So I was definitely, cause Mark kind of touched on that. Um, does it matter what time of the day you take creatine or before or after workout, or does that not matter at all? Yeah. So that's a question I used to get all the time. Um, so yeah, so it actually does not matter what time of the day you take creatine <clears throat> contrary to what a, a lot of people believe, because there's not acute effects of creatine. It's not like you take five grams of creatine. You like feel it right there, right? Like, cause it's not like caffeine. It's more similar to like the multivitamin, right? Like we're getting it in our system and that's how we get the benefits of it over time. It's, it's more chronic effects. Like we're, we're saturating our muscles with the creatine to get the effects over time rather than like, I take creatine and I feel it right then. Right. It's, we don't, you don't get those acute effects of it. Right. That's, that's actually why you do the loading phase in the beginning, because it takes some time to, to get the creatine into your system. Right. So that that's why we load in the beginning you take like 20 grams a day for the first week so that it gets into your system faster and you're able to utilize the benefits of creatine, um, quicker. So hope that makes sense. Um, and Mark put in the chat, if there was anything specific that you wanted me to go into, 
um, to, to go deeper on creatine. I, off the top of my head, I feel like those, yeah. So, so loading, like I said, the, the, the 20 grams for like the first seven days, and then basically five to 10 grams a day and you're good to go. Um, I will say, and then I'll read, looks like Mark put something in the chat, but, um, you also, it also kind of depends on your size, right? If you're like 200 pounds plus, you would want to be actually on closer to like that, the 10 grams a day to get the full benefit. There's, there's research that shows like 10 grams is going to benefit you a little bit more, but if you're like a really small person, like if you're like 150 pounds or below, or like, you know, you're like hundred pounds or something like five, five grams is going to a hundred percent, um, do you good. Like you don't need it any more than that. So that I always throw out that five to 10 gram a day kind of rule of thumb, but your weight actually does matter. So, um, I usually am somewhere between that, like I'll kind of like take a really big heaping scoop or I'll, sometimes I'll even do two scoops of the five grams to get closer to 10. So let's see what Mark put in here. Should you take it every day? Yeah. So that's another, another thing you should take it every day. You actually don't need to cycle off. Like I've heard a lot of people say like, should I cycle off of creatine? You know, it's, it's not like a steroid guys. Like it's just, you know, it's not that serious. Um, it's just got a lot of benefits to it. Um, but it's, you know, it's not like it's like a drug or something like that. Like you don't need to cycle off. It's just like any other kind of supplement. Like you can take it every day. Um, it's yeah. You don't need to cycle off or anything like that. I would say even when you do cycle off, you know, say if, even though you don't need to at all, but maybe you just ran out of creatine, you stopped taking it for a while. I would even say like load again to kind of get in your system and get the benefits again as fast as possible. So, um, Oh, I think I just, <laughs> just answered what Riley was asking there. So yeah, even sometimes if I go on vacation and I don't bring my, my creatine, cause it's like, you know, I don't want to bring my, my white powder across enemy lines type of deal. <laughs> you know, I, they might question me if I bring a little baggy white powder or something like that. Um, you know, so if, sometimes if I'm traveling and I, I don't take my creatine, like I'll even take a little bit extra, you know, even if it's like for a weekend or something, like I'll take, you know, an extra scoop or two the next couple of days when I start taking it again. Right. So it's like, I, I just try to get the benefits of it constantly. And if I, so if I take a little bit of time off, I try to load and, and get the, the benefit of it as quickly as possible. So hope that makes sense. Um, I feel like we spent a good amount of time. I think that was a pretty good deep dive, but let me know if you guys have any more questions on creatine. Um, Okay. I'm going to say one more thing about creatine actually. So just because it's on my mind and it's fresh, um, cause I'm going to be doing a powerlifting competition. If you've got like really a great, like if you're really wanting to hit certain numbers, like, and you're like really going for strength, um, like the closer you get to that, like maybe when you're going to max out or test things, you, you may even benefit from a little bit more creatine, like almost kind of like do a loading phase, like the week that you're going to max out. And that's, that's the last thing I'll say on creatine, unless you guys have more questions, but I did that the last time I maxed out and I don't know if it had a benefit or not, but I, I saw research that, that it could benefit you. So just something to note. Cool. Now we'll dive deep into caffeine and pre-workout, which is something I've talked about a decent amount. I mean, we've talked about caffeine a, a good amount in the past, but it's been a while, like I said. So, um, and I even made this YouTube video a while back. Um, I think it was called how to, how to caffeinate correctly. So go check that one out if you want a really deep dive into caffeine. Um, but I'll go into it real quickly, like what caffeine actually does, because a lot of people, you know, don't even really know what caffeine does. They just think it like kind of gives you energy, right? But it actually doesn't. It just um, stops you from feeling tired, actually. Like so, so what caffeine does is it it binds to your adenosine receptors, okay, um, and it and allows you to to block the. Uh, the adenosine from binding to adenosine receptors. So adenosine is what what makes you feel sleepy throughout the day. So when when adenosine is binding to your adenosine receptors, that's what helps. That's what causes you to start feeling sleepy throughout the day. So what caffeine does, it actually blocks the adenosine from binding to those receptors. Um, so it allows you to not get sleepy as much throughout the day. So that's what caffeine actually does. Um, so just wanted to, you know, I feel like when I learned that, it was just interesting to me. I feel like I I thought about caffeine differently once I learned that. Um, so yeah. And then one thing you want to think about too, is to get the most out of caffeine, um, right when you wake up. So after a full night's sleep, um, your, your adenosine isn't going to be like 
trying to bind to your receptors. So right when you wake up, that's when most people drink caffeine, but you're not really going to get much benefit right when you wake up from it. You actually, if you delay it an hour and a half to two hours after waking, you, you'll get a lot more out of that caffeine because that's when your adenosine is going to start trying to bind to those receptors and start getting you sleepy throughout the day. Um, so then by waiting an hour and a half to two hours and then drinking your caffeine, um, then you'll get the benefit of blocking those adenosine, uh, the adenosine from binding to those receptors um, and, and stopping you from getting as sleepy throughout the day. So hope that makes sense. Um, so yeah, and I've talked about it before. Like I said, check out this video. Um, but I, I mostly stick to coffee and, uh, and teas at this point. I kind of went away from pre-workout almost completely. I would say like 99% of the time I drink uh, coffee or tea for my caffeine. <clears throat> and I, really it's just because I want, I want clean sources of caffeine. Um, and I know like the doses of caffeine in it. And I like, yeah, I just kind of have it down to a tea and a system. Um, and that's what benefits me the most. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I've gravitated towards. I just know that they're clean sources of caffeine. You know, you're not getting all the extra ingredients that are in like energy drinks and stuff like that. And even some pre-workouts just have unnecessary ingredients and fillers, stuff like that. Um, but I am going to talk about, cause Mark was asking, um, about, you know, pre-workouts. So beta alanine is another ingredient that there's actually a lot of research behind and there is um, benefits to, to having beta alanine. So that that's actually what, if you guys have taken pre-workout pre -workout before and you feel like that itchiness, <laughs> so like that itchy feeling you get when you take pre-workout, that's actually the beta alanine. Okay. So the, there is benefits to beta alanine. It is basically a stimulant as well, just like caffeine. Um, and it's, it's going to help you actually just, yeah, do a little bit more in the gym, be a little bit stronger, have a little bit better performance, you know, cause it's a stimulant. Um, so there's, there's strength performance benefits to beta alanine. Another interesting thing to note, um, you know, I've talked about it before with caffeine. So the half-life of caffeine is about eight hours. So what that means is every eight hours, there's still like half of that amount of caffeine that you first ingested in your system. So if you were to drink like 100 milligrams of caffeine, say just like a cup of coffee, eight hours later, there's still 50 milligrams of caffeine like working in your system. Okay, so it's got, that's a long half-life, right? So that that's why you want to stop drinking caffeine early on in the day because um, if you drink it too late at night, it's, it's in your system for a long time. It's going to affect your sleep, right? But the interesting thing with beta alanine, the, the half-life is like an hour. So it's actually pretty cool. Like it, you could probably take that at night and be good to go um, because it's not really going to be in your system that long. So just wanted to note that. Um, so there's, there's benefits to beta alanine in pre-workouts. I'm not going to go through like every single ingredient that's in some pre-workouts, um, but this is the ingredient profile and the nutrition facts on uh, one of Ghost's pump pre-workouts. I just really wanted to talk about kind of the pump products um, because I think they have their place. Um, I would say there's there's some research to show like the nitric oxide is going to help you with your, your oxygen uptake and um, being able to get better pumps and just like perform a little bit better um, and have, you know, even on cardio and stuff like that, you'll, you'll perform a little bit better. There's research that shows that, but um, what I've found there to be a place for with, with pump products is like, if you do like pre-workout and say you're someone that works out later in the day, you know, you can still take a pre-workout late at night and it's gonna, not going to affect your sleep. Um, so I've even had clients say like, <laughs> just the act of like sipping on pre-workout after work and stuff like that just gets them in the zone to, to work out and stuff like that. Um, so I've suggested, okay, go, go for like a pump product so that, so that you don't affect your sleep. Right. But you're still going to get a little bit of benefit from the, from, from the extra pump, pump pre-workout. Um, it'll kind of just be a ritual to get you to go work out type of thing. So, um, let's see if we got something in the chat here. <clears throat> I take a caffeine pill before my workout, 200 grams. Um, what time do you do that Rossi? Cause um, that's a decent amount. I used to take caffeine pills too. Um, so there's nothing wrong with caffeine pills. It's just like, boom, I'm just taking straight caffeine, you know, nothing wrong with that. Um, but if we're taking it too late at night, that could be, a, you know, that, that could be keeping you up at night. Um, so yeah, it's me, usually about 30 minutes before my workout. Okay. What, what time do you usually work out? Uh, like, uh, now. Oh, like now. Okay. Dude, I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that's a little late. I I would say like, hmm, yeah, I 
is there any way that you could work out earlier in the day? Or is it just this is the only time it really works for your schedule? This, this works for me, but I mean, I don't need to take it. But uh, okay. it does help. You know. Yeah, something I've suggested, um, and, you know, other people can benefit from this as well, is like, you know, like I said, like the, the half-life of caffeine is is pretty long. So a lot of people think like you need to take it like right before the, the workout. But, you know, even if you took it a couple hours, three, even three, four hours before, like a lot of that's still going to be in your system, but that's going to help it so that, you know, it's going to allow you to get a lot more out of it, out of your system by the time you are going to go to sleep. Right. So you'll still have a, a decent amount in your system for that workout, but just by like pushing it up a little bit in the day, um, you know, that won't affect your sleep as much. So that's something I might try. Like you can still take the caffeine pill, nothing wrong with that, but try to take it as early as you possibly can um, so that you don't affect your sleep as much as possible. I, I usually say rule of thumb, like try to stop taking caffeine around noon, honestly. So at, at the very latest, like one, to be honest with you. So e even if you're someone like I've had a lot of people say like they can take um, caffeine and they go straight to sleep, which, yeah, that may be the case, but your quality of sleep could still take a hit. So, um, there's a lot of research that shows that, um, but yeah, hope that's helpful. Um, let me guys know if you got more questions on caffeine or pre-workout, see what we got here. So, man, this is turning into a long one. This is, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this, going kind of in depth on some of this stuff, but these are just some honorable mentions when it comes to, to supplements. Um, you know, like I said before, vitamin D doesn't hurt to get extra vitamin D. I, so I have my multivitamin and I take vitamin D. Okay. Fish oil. I've been taking that for years. There's some benefits to fish oil for your, for your brain and your heart, lots of different things, even your joints. Um, so I like fish oil, like I said, magnesium and zinc. Um, that was one I started taking this when I got my testosterone results. Cause, um, these are good for your hormones. Um, so like I said, it's in your multivitamin. So you're, you know, you're getting some in there, but it doesn't hurt to get a little extra. Um, and then we talked about melatonin before, you know, that can help with sleep, definitely help you fall asleep, but refresher reminder, you only need like less than a milligram because your body naturally produces like 0.25 milligrams of melatonin for sleep. Like melatonin is something you naturally produce. Um, but a lot of the, the melatonin supplements on the market is like five, 10 plus milligrams. It's way too much. That's, that's, what's going to make you have that drowsy feeling the next day. Okay. So you don't need that much. You need like one milligram or less and you're good to go. I've talked about elderberry. Shout out to Mark. He suggested this. Now I've been taking that. Um, so this is like, uh, well, this isn't the one, but you can get like a melatonin and elderberry, uh, with this Ollie brand. And so you can kind of cover both your bases with that, but elderberry is really good for immunity. I've been taking it for years now and knock on wood. I like never get sick. Um, so, so yeah, so maybe it's placebo, but elderberry really good for immunity. I highly suggest it. And then the last one I'll talk about here is choline, choline. Um, and so I actually, in my nutrition one-on-one -on -one class at A&M, um, they talked about choline and they, they there was a stat like 90% of Americans are deficient in choline. It's just hard to get it within your diet especially if you don't eat eggs. Um, so when I heard that stat, I was like, all right, I'm supplementing with choline. Um, and there's lots of benefits to it actually. So, you know, for your brain and, and other things. So yeah. So I've been taking choline ever since I, I heard that, but yeah, it's choline by tartrate is what I take. Um, so yeah. Cool. So that's really it. That turned into a pretty long one, but hope that was helpful for y'all. I'm not going to go through all the different categories again. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys have any other questions. If you want me to dive deeper into that, I feel like that was a, a decent deep dive. I'm going to give away some quest bars to one of these guys that are on the call. Um, let's have a great rest of the week, y'all. Again, we got a good amount of competitors now, so I'm pretty pumped up. Um, we actually got people like right in the nick of time. I think we've got, I think I, I'm going to have to count again. I think 36 Transformation Challenge competitors now. So um, pretty pumped. You know, now there's, now there's some, uh, you know, there's some competitors in here, so you got some competition if you're doing it. So let's get serious. Let's let's lock in for the next three months, y'all. Um, but yeah, let me know if you all have questions on this. Let me know if you have topic ideas that you want to know more about. Let's have a great rest of the week. I'm going to talk to everyone that's on the call here, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace. 
I hope that was helpful for you. If you liked the video, then like the damn video and subscribe for more fitness and personal development content like this. And I'll see you all in the next video. And in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.